Washington State University. Go Cougs! Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to cover lesson five of the Working with Activity and Health Data module. In this lesson, we're going to cover data aggregation. So data aggregation is gathering and summarizing information, perhaps in preparation for statistical analysis or visualization. As a motivating example, suppose you have some clinical data with different characteristics about patients and you want to figure out what are the similarities between patients in different groups. Perhaps the groups you're looking at include male and female, and the characteristics include medical condition, age, and gender. So you could group your data set into male and female and aggregate the data in each group, such as finding out the average age of men versus women, or making a bar chart to represent the frequency or the count of the different types of medical conditions that men face versus females face. And then you could take this the next step and perform a hypothesis test to see if there is a significant age difference or a significant count or frequency of the number of medical conditions in men versus women. When we perform data aggregation, we typically follow a split, apply, combine process. So by split, we mean split the data into groups based on some criteria. In our previous example, our criteria was gender, and we had two groups, men and women. With a data frame, we can group our data by rows, which would be axis zero, or by columns, which would be axis one. After we split our data set, then we want to apply some sort of function to each group independently that's going to summarize that group and produce a new value. So some examples of applying a function would be computing an average, say the average age, or computing a count, such as the number of men who have stroke versus number of women who have a stroke. Uh, we could also transform the data, such as standardizing it using a z-score or some other normalization process, filling missing values. And another example of applying a function would be filtering. So discarding some groups, maybe because there aren't enough of them, the sample size n is too small to really be representative or perform the statistics that we want to perform. Uh, or also perhaps filtering out the data based on the group sum or mean. So maybe we're only interested in ethnic groups where the average age is above 65. So we're working with older adults, for example. After we split the data into groups and apply a function to each group, then we want to combine the results of applying each function to each group together. And we'll typically do this with a series where the index corresponds to the data frame column names and the values represent the column statistic, what we applied in step two, apply a function. So here's an example of a great graphic um, from Wes McKinney's book. So suppose we have this series where we have keys a, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C, and we have values called data associated with those keys. So if we want to group on key, so A, B, C would be our three groups, then we'll have three data items in each group. So here's our initial split. So here's our A group, here's our B group, and here is our C group. And then we want to apply a function in this case, we're going to apply the sum statistic to sum up the count of, or the, excuse me, sum up the values of the data in each one of these groups. So for example, A would be zero plus five plus 10 is 15. B would be five plus 10 plus 15 is 30. And C would be 10 plus 15 plus 20, which is 45. Then we're going to combine 
those individual results into uh, another series where the index is the name of the group and the value is going to be the result of applying a function such as sum to each one of those groups. So this split apply combined functionality can easily be achieved in pandas with the group by function. So what group by does is the initial split step, and then we can perform our apply and combine using other standard pandas functionality. So suppose we have a data frame, which is listed here. This is an example I took from the group by documentation of the pandas website where we have four columns, gender, age group, feature one, and feature two. So let's go ahead and run this and print out the data frame. So here are our four columns, and here's a default index applied to identify each row in our data frame. Now let's group our data by, a, or excuse me, by gender. So let's have gender groups is assigned data frame dot group by and we'll group by gender. And then we can go ahead and print out the groups in this group by object. That is the type of gender groups. So here are our two groups. F and M. Notice that this looks like a dictionary, so the key F is going to map to an index of 0, 1, 3, 7. So 0, 1, 3, and 7 are all of our females. And similarly for our males, but 2, 4, 5, 6. So the union of these two indices should be our original index. Now next, Let's go ahead and get a data frame that is a subset of our original data frame corresponding to our female group. So we're gonna do female df is assign gender groups dot get group f. And let's go ahead and print out female df. So here's our data frame of only our females. We see all f's down this column. And let's do the same for our males. So just change this from female to male and F to M and female to male. And now we'll get a data frame with all M's in this column. So the last thing that I want to confirm is that these two data frames are two subsets of our original data frame that when combined together reform or restructure our original data frame. So let's just print out the length of the original DF and make sure that it is equal to the length of our female DF plus the length of our male DF. And this should evaluate to true and it does. Awesome. So let's move on from working with a toy example to working with a real example. We're going to return to our Parkinson's Healthy Older Adults Activity Data Set, and we're going to immediately just start in with the cleaned data set. So here is my relative path name to that clean data set, and I'm going to go ahead and read it in. pd.readcsv, fname header get zero, and the index column is going to get zero comma one. We'll set up that hierarchical index. And let's print out the shape, and let's print out the first 10. So it looks like it was loaded up correctly, 665 by three. So far, so good. So now we have these two groups in our class column. 
healthy older adults, and Parkinson's disease. So let's split on class. So let's have classes is assigned df.group by class. And then let's go ahead and print out essentially the values in this group by object, which is dictionary-like. So let's print out class name and class df for, excuse me, in classes. And see so what it looks like. So here is our healthy older adult data frame. And here, midway through, so there's 446 healthy older adults. And here's our Parkinson's disease data frame. And there's 219 Parkinson's disease participants in this particular data set. So the last thing we want to do here is apply and combine. So let's figure out what is the mean and standard deviation for the age in each group. So let's make a data frame to store these age results. So it's going to be empty initially, but we'll set the index to be the classes.groups. So HOA and PD will be our index, and our columns will be our statistics. So let's do age mean and age standard deviation. Now for class name and class DF in classes, we'll set age results sub DF, selecting class name and age mean that item will be the result of computing class df sub age dot mean. And I'm going to go ahead and just copy this line here and repeat it for the standard deviation. And the only thing I have left to do once I finish this line is to print out our age results df, which is going to be our combined result. So I run this, and here I see the average age for healthy older adults is 68.67. For Parkinson's disease, it's 68.85. So these are highly age-matched, and the standard deviations are quite close as well.